Hey everybody, Melon here. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at a new mouse from a new company I have never heard before. We are taking a look at the Rapu V29 Pro. Now, Rapu is a company I have never heard of before. They are a Chinese company, and which makes sense why I've never heard of them before, because it's very rare that the Chinese mice actually make it over here to Canada to be easily accessible. We still don't have Darmo Shark and a lot of other brands over here, but Rapu is on Amazon Canada now, and I saw this on a sale on Black Friday. I was like, eh, you know what? Might as well try it out and see what the Rapu mice are all about. So today we're going to do a quick unboxing Unboxing this product, talk about a couple of the features. I will have a full review of the Rapu VT9 Pro out in a little while, but for now, we're just going to do a brief unboxing. All right, and a quick disclaimer before we get started uh, I purchased this product for myself. This review is not sponsored or endorsed by Rapu in any way, shape, or form. Alrighty, now in terms of pricing, the Rapu VT9 Pro retails up at least up here in Canada for $74.99 Canadian. During the Black Friday sale that just passed, it was on sale for, I believe it was $39 Canadian, which is a disgustingly cheap deal for a mouse of this caliber. So that's really nice to see. For the review, I will be looking at this mouse from the higher price point. I'm not going to have the lower price kind of affect the overall pricing of it because I'm going to treat this as a full price mouse. So just keep that in mind. It is available in black and white colorways and you can purchase add-ons for this mouse, which I thought was kind of interesting. You can order a 4K dongle, which we see traditionally, but you can also order a wireless charging piece for this mouse. I'm not sure if there's going to be more accessories that are available in China that aren't available over here in Canada or the United States yet, but that's kind of a cool thing. We haven't really seen a lot of modular mice and quite a while while actually so it's kind of nice to see at least some add-on parts onto the mouse overall the packaging felt really nice it is fairly recyclable there are a couple pieces of the packaging that will not be recyclable but for the most part it is pretty much all cardboard which is nice to see in terms of what's included in the box we have the vt9 pro itself we have a usb c to a adapter dongle we have a usb a to c cable we have an included set of grip tape and an extra set of ptfe skates which is really nice to see there's a lot of mice that are in the similar price point that do not come with extra skates or grip tapes that's a really nice Thing to see included. We have a user manual and we have a USB A 2.4 gigahertz dongle. Now the dongle is not actually in the rest of the packaging. It's actually inside the mouse itself. You can pop off this little magnetic cover on the base of the VT9 Pro and there's a dongle storage thing inside there. Now, personally speaking, I'm not the biggest fan of having those extra compartments because it does add weight onto the mouse, but I know some people do like having that option. But overall, the unboxing and the packaging is very impressive. I'm actually quite happy with it overall. All right, now in terms of dimensions, the VT9 Pro comes in at 124.83 millimeters long. It is 67.08 millimeters wide. Now keep in mind that is measured at the maximum of these two flare outs on the side. It will be thinner depending on the, how you hold the mouse due to the hourglass shape of this mouse. And it has a maximum height of 38.74 millimeters and that is measured at the peak of the hump of this mouse. Now in terms of weight, this mouse is advertised as coming in at 68 grams. When I weighed it on my scale, it was more in the 69.3 gram range and that's with the dongle out of the unit and the protective covering on the skates removed. So it will definitely be on the higher side depending Depending on your unit. In terms of QC though, the unit feels pretty good. I haven't noticed any really bad creaking, any flexing. Overall, it feels pretty well built, but we'll have to see how it holds up during testing. Now, the shape of the VT9 Pro is very interesting. It feels like a Viper Mini, but it has these very exaggerated hourglass flare outs towards the back. It's a very interesting shape. The shape is definitely optimized for claw grip and palm grip, depending on your hand size. Now, with my 7.5 inch by 5 inch hands, this mouse actually feels very comfortable in my hand. Now, I will note the hump of this mouse is ever so slightly backwards, which is nice to see it's not as far back as we saw in the x2h and it's not centered like we saw in the x2v2 but it's like ever so slightly towards the back which does help with the grip ability which is nice to see now one really nice thing about the shape is that these flare outs towards the back of the mouse do actually help a lot with grip ability because when you're holding the mouse you can kind of use it to anchor this corner into this kind of meaty part of the base of your thumb and then you can also use it to kind of anchor your pinky on this side of the mouse so you can actually have a lot of grip ability on the mouse it doesn't make a lot of contact towards this area so there's going to be a bit of a gap here which honestly I'm okay with because it does have a more of a feeling of like an x2h in the hand but it actually does have a pretty comfortable grip overall which is nice to see now in terms of fingertip and palm grip I'll do some testing on that for the full review I definitely don't think this is going to be a very fingertipable mouse just because the weight and the overall shape of this mouse but for palm grip and claw grip for medium hand to large hands is actually may feel pretty good but I'll cover that more in the full review now in terms of coating there is no coating on the vt9 pro it just seems like bare plastic very much like what we saw in the keychron m3 mice I I will say the Keychron M3 mice were kind of a weird plastic. I just kind of picked everything up. This one seems a little different. It seems like a more of a matte kind of feel to it, but it is still fairly slippery on my hands. Like you can see, I'm just kind of like, there's pretty much nothing 
holding my finger onto this. So that is one downside. Now, of course, it does come with included grip tape, but we'll have to see how that grip tape actually performs. Traditionally speaking, internal grips are not that great. So we'll have to see how the grips hold out for the full review or if there's anything else I can do to increase the grippability of this texture. One odd thing I did notice about the VT9 Pro though is that this is using a very odd sensor. Now, I don't know if this is just a typo or if this is a translation error, but on the spec sheet, it says that this is using a Pixar 3398 sensor, which I haven't heard of before. I've only heard of the 3395, but the actual actual specs of the sensor that are listed on the product page mirror the specifications we find on a 3395 sensor. It can also support high pulling rate, but it doesn't have motion sync. So I don't know if this is a typo and it was supposed to say 3389, but then again, I've never seen a 3389 sensor that supports 4K pulling rate, but I've never seen a 3395 that doesn't have motion sync and I've never heard of a 3398 sensor. So unless it's like a brand new sensor that we're just seeing now, I don't exactly know what this is. So a bit of an odd sensor. I'll figure out what that is in the full review, but I just wanted to mention that because it's kind of odd. Now, the only thing I know about the switches as of right now is that they are 50 million click lifetime switches and they are Omron switches of some variety. So exactly like the sensor, I'm going to have to take this thing apart and find out what's actually on the inside. Now, in terms of the actual click force, they feel very similar to the Wano pink shell dots that were on my Keychron M3 Mini and M3 Mini 4K and M2. Feel really good. They just have a slightly higher actuation. Now, one thing I will note about this, the clicks on the actual shell this mouse are not indented so I'm wondering if I'm going to have the same issue with this mouse I had with the Keychron M3 series mice where my thumb can kind of prevent the actuation from happening so I'll have to see if that happens but I'll cover that in the full review. Now the side buttons feel heavier than the main clicks but they do have really good tensioning so I'm not sure if it's going to be a different switch type I'm assuming it will be but I'll find out in the full review. Now I will know that the main and the side switches do feel a little tense right now I'm assuming they're going to loosen up over time so my initial impressions right now may be very different from how they actually feel in the full review so just keep that in mind. The scroll wheel is slightly heavier than the scroll wheel we found on the Keychron M2. However, it does have a higher scroll point and the scroll is a little looser. It still does feel okay overall. And then the scroll wheel click feels completely different from all the rest of the switches on the unit. So I'm going to have to tear this apart and find out what's on the inside as per usual with a lot of these mice. And on the plus side, it does have an included set of skates, which a lot of mice don't have it. So I don't have to worry about taking this mouse apart and having to use third party skates. I can just use the stock ones, which is a nice touch. So and nice to see that. Of course, I just wish I didn't have to tear every mouse I got apart, but it is what it is. All right, let's talk about the skates. So as I mentioned before, this mouse does include an extra set of PTFE skates, which is a really nice touch. I wish more companies would do that. Now the skates themselves just feel like pretty solid. Soft PTFE. They're nothing fancy. The glide on them is actually pretty good. One issue I did have with them though is that I'm worried about the adhesion because when I went to remove the covering on them that came out of the box, I did notice I peeled up one of them a little bit. So I'm not sure how good the adhesion is on the bottom. I'm not sure how well they're going to hold up on harder surfaces like a resin surface or a glass surface. I'll have to do some testing on that for the full review, but at least it does come with extra ones, which is nice to see. Now, one potential issue I do have with these skates is that they are very, very big and they have a lot of surface area. Generally speaking, when it comes to heavier mice up in the high 60s, 70s range, I generally prefer to find a lower surface area skate on those mice to help offset the weight rather than having these big surface area skates because the more surface area there is on the skate, of course, depending on the material, there's going to be more friction, which means the mouse is going to feel slower. And with this mouse being around the 69, 70 gram range, I would definitely would have liked to see a lower surface area skate design. I'm not going to put third parties on this one. I am going to keep the remaining stocks on here as long as I can. I'll cover the skate performance in the full review and see if it would be worth for Rappu to go for a lower surface area escape, but we'll have to see how that fares for testing. All right, now, last thing I want to talk about was the onboard memory in the software. So the software was like really hard to find for some reason. I kept going to Rappu's website and I couldn't find a product page for it. It turns out you had to type in a URL that was like on the Amazon product page hidden under one of the tabs, and then you can go there and then you can find the software for it. So it was kind of hard to find it, which was a little annoying. The software itself is pretty bad honestly it's it's not horrible but it's not that great it's definitely a little slow whenever you change a dpi level or rebound a button the program like pauses for like three seconds while it loads. So it's not the fastest software. I'll do some testing. I'll cover this in more depth in the full review once I can figure out why the software is being so weird. That is everything for my quick unboxing of the Rapu VT9 Pro. This is definitely an interesting mouse. As of right now, I do have a couple concerns about the overall mouse itself, but I'll wait to do my full review before I talk about those in more depth. But anyways, that is all for today. So thank you very much for watching. Be sure to get subscribed to the channel so you don't miss the full review of the VT9 Pro coming in a couple weeks, which I'm done testing. And also if you guys aren't following me on X, Instagram, and TikTok, I will be making little update videos about all the products I'm testing, including the VT9 Pro. So if you guys want to stay in the loop of what's happening with the testing process, be sure to go give me a follow over there. Thank you again for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.